Card Parking, brought to you by Right Honda and Right Toyota, proudly out of Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm your host, Jay Finning, recording from my studio in Gilbert. Coming up on today's show, it is here, the episode with Mike Jimenez of Jada Toys. This is your first time listening to the show. If you would, please go ahead and subscribe or click the follow button or whatever it takes so you see more of these shows, because I can promise you, if you go back and look at the episode list, you will find a handful or more of shows that you will want to listen to. And the good news is you can listen to all of them here on out. Mike Jimenez, Jada Toys, after this word from Four Wheel Online. Jay Finning here, and I want to tell you guys about Four Wheel Online. For over a decade, Four Wheel Online has been bringing the best truck accessories and truck parts to enhance the appearance and performance of all trucks and SUVs. They are dedicated to providing an extensive range of upgrades that will match any maker model on the road. The truck products cover everything you need to give your truck a custom look and added functionality. And if you need a tire and wheel package, head over and use the configuration tool. They carry all the major brands of wheels and tires, so go we'll get outfitted today. So visit them online at Four Wheel Online or call them at 813 769 2451. Again, that's Four Wheel Online, the number four wheel online. This conversation is brought to you by The Cell Shop, an Arizona-based retailer that strives to be your destination of choice for wireless services, whether Arizona, Washington State, California, Texas, and Florida. They're an authorized AT&T dealer, so visit them at cellshop.us and get connected today. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce Mike Jimenez. Did I say it right? You got it right, Fuck dude. Yeah. yeah, so this is J- <laughs> Jada Toys Mike. We How connected, you doing? dude. I just, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm glad we finally got this thing rolling. I know, man. I mean, we've been trying to do this since what? Fuel Fest, yeah. Fuel, Arizona. Fuel Fest, Arizona, yeah. How the hell are you? you so you were moving <laughs> before. Yeah, yeah. so the, one of the reasons why we couldn't get this thing going is, um, you know, one, uh, Jada Toys is kind of uh, in, a, in a growth pattern right now, and um, we're moving offices. We're also moving to a bigger showroom. Um, and at the same time, it just so happens that I'm in the middle of buying a new house, so we're like, everything is just kind of all over the place. And um, right now, my whole family, mom, brothers, uh, sisters, their kids, um, all went to the Philippines. I was supposed to go with them. Um, and and uh, But because the house was supposed to be closing this week, uh, I couldn't go. But they delayed my house for another month. Um, and now I'm stuck taking care of my mom's dog. So <laughs> What kind of <laughs> there, dog? Oh, uh, it's a, uh, what is this dog? It's a, um, big dog, mul- little dog. Mul- Maltese? Malti poo. Malti poo. Oh, Malti poo. Okay. Yeah. yeah. My daughter has a Maltese and I had a Yorkie poo. Oh, really? So yeah, that's a really fun size dog. Yeah. Mine was much smaller, yeah. but. It's there, there. I mean, to me, I, I love big dogs, but this, this dog is, is pretty amazing, man. It's like, she, she's, uh, she, you can teach her something in 15 minutes and she'll retain it. Like. Like I was driving her around in um, in my truck, and she would climb all over you. And when I first brought her home, uh, because I brought her home from my old neighbors uh, who had an, a dog that that they just couldn't take care of anymore, so they gave it to us um, because my mom wanted another dog. And uh, I brought her home. And as I was driving, it was like a thirty minute drive, and this dog was like climbing all over me while I'm driving, getting on all the buttons in the middle center <laughs> console. That's funny, dude. It, it was it was a joke. Um, and then during this time, while we're taking care of this dog, um, my wife and I went out and she ran into a store for 15 minutes. I stayed in the car with the dog and I taught her how to sit on the center console on the, on the, uh, the padded area right be above the, the little, uh, the, the contain the, the area where you store stuff. Sure. Right. Yep. And in 15 minutes she got it. She sat there and sat there the whole ride home. And then the next day, we drove uh, uh, about an hour out to go visit a friend. Sat right there on the, the on the whole ride. So yeah, she was she's pretty awesome. That's is she young? Uh, she's I think three years old. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. how long ago was that? Did this happen? The story? Uh, within the past week, because oh. we, <laughs> I've been taking care. <laughs> I've been taking care of her for the past week. Um, my mom had her since probably I want to say. Um, Maybe maybe January. Wow. Yeah, because uh, yeah, because my that my neighbor had three dogs, and this third one wasn't getting along with that, my neighbor's cats. My mom's dog that she had previously 
uh, they had to put down uh, because she had he had a, a lot of health issues, uh, like maybe like six months ago. So they're about ready to have another dog. So uh, I offered it to my mom, and she said, "Yeah." So yeah, that's how she got it. Of course. Yeah, and she needs it. I mean, she's just she's yeah. she's you know she's she needs that companionship. Uh, she's there by herself pretty much most of the day. So yeah, it's it's a it was a good thing. That's good, man. I mean, dog, yeah. dogs are great. Oh, yep. So let's shift to uh, Jada Toys really quick. So you're the VP yeah. of marketing right now, or I am the VP of marketing. Actually, when I start, I've been working at Jada Toys for now going on 19 years. Um, yeah, I've been there for a while. I started at the, the package. Yeah, it's it's crazy, and I still feel like the new guy because things, the way I kind of view every one of my jobs is like, um, I'm I'm always trying to feel like I'm the new guy. I always have to prove myself, right? Because I don't want to get complacent. I don't want to get comfortable where I'm at and feel like I'm just, you know, just going through the motions now because I feel comfortable. You, you know, my, my mentality has always been to try to work hard and show my worth for, to the company, no matter how long I've been there. And, and it's paid off. You know, um, I started as a, a packaging designer. When I got in, I didn't do one lick of packaging. Uh, I started uh, doing some graphic design work for all the collateral material, doing like PowerPoint presentations, doing uh, print ads. Um, then I got into the web department and started designing all the website while I was doing all the other collateral material. So, I mean, I moved throughout the, the, the company uh, multiple times. Like that I've, I was in um, the, the PD department, which was my position prior to becoming marketing. Uh, but prior to PD, I was kind of in the marketing department doing a bunch of stuff because my background before Jada Toys was marketing. So I think I did IT. I've done, I mean, the only thing I haven't done is sales <laughs> and, and licensing. Those are the only two things I really haven't done in the company. Both look like or sound like they could be kind of a, kind of a, um, I don't want to say a pain in the butt. But it sounds like they could definitely be a pain in the butt when it comes to, <laughs> to licensing. Because you guys, I mean, Jada Toys, you know, when I think of Jada Toys, you know, I, obviously I think of stuff related to cars. But they do yeah. so much more than just cars. They oh, do yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah we're, we're consciously, that's one of our biggest things is is trying to venture out into different categories. You know, we're, we, we have, our foundation is vehicles. That's what we're founded on. That's what we're based on. That's our bread and butter um, and the the main thing about Jada Toys is that we cater to the inner city kids, the you know the urban kids. We weren't you know doing the mainstream stuff. Not the you know we didn't want to really do the cars that are just replicas of what you see on the showroom floor. We wanted right. to do the custom stuff that you see on the street. Our very first custom vehicle that we did was uh, a Chevy Astro van, and that's what everyone on every block in LA had. Someone had a, yeah. a custom lowered Chevy Astro van. And that's what we saw. That's what we did. And that's what put Jada on the map. You know, that's that's how we started. And that's what we're striving to keep that core uh, for Jada Toys. But we also want to venture out because we are at its very soul is a true toy company. We don't want to just be known as vehicles. And that's become kind of a stigma that we've had for mm. as long as I've been there. You know, we it's hard for us to break out and do different things because Oh, Jada Toys, you're the you're those guys that make vehicles, that guy that cast cars. Like, yeah, we are, but we also do plush. We also do action right. figures. We also do collectibles. You know, it's we do a lot of other stuff now. Um, and it was uh it's it was hard uh to kind of get out of that funk, um, which is not really funk, you know, it was, it's not a bad position to be in no, to be I known as a, a vehicle right. company, right? <laughs> but <laughs> um, but it's it's something where we felt that we needed to do to grow the company um you know because there's only so much you can do with 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 diecast vehicles and we wanted to be you know a mainstream vehicle company we are a mass market player we're not just catering towards the hobby crowds you know um but at the same time we want to keep that that edge to us where we can grow in the hobby areas and and to the mains uh, the hardcore like diecast collectors who really want something special rather than having to go hunt for it over at uh, the Walmarts and the targets of the world. It sounds kind of like, now, now I don't know the work and I have a question for you later on. So, um, yeah, yeah. it's, it's a perception versus reality question. So think okay. about that instead of, you know, necessarily <laughs> answering that right now, but it sounds like <laughs> it, it'd be a really cool job 
do you have to travel a lot? Does it impact with the family? Oh, Joel, I mean, so I don't have any kids. Um, it's funny. We just hired an, a new guy at our, our um, in China. Uh, he's or Hong Kong. He's uh, one of our inventor engineering type guys, but mm-hmm. he's a really good designer. And um, his he constantly reminds me, never stop playing, never stop playing. And um, and I love that because, you know, he's the same kind of same as me where he's he's not married. He has a wife. He has no kids. So but he does it because, you know, he doesn't want to stop playing because he knows that once he gets a kid, has a kid, he's <laughs> he has to <laughs> he has to, uh, you know, redirect his focus. And he you know, he's not prepared for that yet, you know. So once he is prepared to have a kid, and I'm sure he will, but, um, you know, right now I don't, my, my wife and I don't have kids. Um, we're still, still trying to get settled down with, you know, our lives and you know, we're getting pretty close. And, um, but it, it, it's, you know, it, it's cool being at Jada Toys. Well, in the positions I've been, cause not everyone does get to travel, but sure. I've been uh, lucky enough to be able to go travel to Hong Kong. You know, one of my positions, one of the things I was doing as uh, marketing and, PD was designing the showrooms for our, uh, you know, for here in LA and uh, the previous owners of Jada toys, because we have, we were purchased by uh, another uh, company from Germany. Um, We, when I did the showroom, he liked what I did so much. He said, next weekend, you're going to go to Hong Kong to do the same thing for Hong Kong. So in our Hong Kong offices. Yeah. So, so one week, you know, if you're, if you're talking about, is it is it a, a problem with the family? It can be, but because I don't have kids, um, and it's just me and my wife, it's a lot easier to to deal with that stuff. So um, so yeah, I got to, had to, I get to go to Hong Kong. Um, I was able to go to Italy to shoot commercials for some of our product. Um, Sounds terrible. Uh, going to going to China, checking out factories. Um, you know, and and with this new uh, parent company that 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 owns Jada Toys now. Uh, there's a possibility of going to Thailand because we have factories in Thailand, Vietnam, Bangladesh, uh, Madagascar, even. So there's there's a, a big opportunity to do some really cool traveling, which I'm pretty excited about. I was going to say, it kind of sounds, well, first off, you do so good designing the showroom. And they said, all right, next week you're going to go to Japan to do it. Are yeah. you like, hell yeah, but part of you is like, oh shit. Or are you just like, let's just go, <laughs> let's, let's do this? Well, when I, when I, when I, that was the, the first time I had to do that was, man, I was still maybe about five, four years into working at Jada Toys. Okay. Um, and, and not like, and at that time in my life, like I didn't have a, a, a credit card with, with, with a big budget on there. You know, I, yeah. I was like, shoot, how, how am I going to pay for that, that, that hotel room? You know, I was, I was worried about that kind of stuff, you know, um, and because most companies, this is what, you know, you, you pay for everything and then you get reimbursed. You, yep. you, yeah. You know most. what I mean? Um, not all. Yeah. Especially at the level I was at, at the time, you know, they didn't have corporate cards or whatever. Um, so, I, cause I was really low level at the time. I was, it was, it was, you know, I was pretty much entry level, not even a, a, a like a, a manager or anything, um, or senior designer. It was just a designer. And, um, I went out there, uh, Luckily, I did have enough. I was able to do everything and and had a great time. And you know, shoot, it was it was it was awesome. I, I I'm really fortunate to be able to do all that stuff because I was at the right place at the right times and doing the right things for the company. That's fantastic, man. It it, it sounds kind of like a dream job if you know if you have understanding people in your life, you know, because mm-hmm. I would imagine a lot of people would love to do what you do, and I, I think oh, it's yeah. absolutely amazing, man. It's oh. I can't even I, I, I couldn't ask for any more. It, it is it is definitely a dream job. You know, you get to play with toys all day. I mean, literally playing with them. You know, you're you're getting buying toys, checking them out. You know, playing with them, making sure, trying to break them. You know, seeing where the weak points are. You know, and um, and then you know, figuring out and trying to make make the best product that you can. It's 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 rewarding. It's fun. It's yeah, dude. I, I couldn't complain. I, that's why I still feel. Like I'm the new guy, mm-hmm. 20 years into this or 19 years into this, you know, it's 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 never the same. It's always different. There's always new challenges, and it's always a learning experience. Speaking of toys, let's talk about your Supra. Ah, yes. <laughs> Is this thing still um, 
I don't want to say wrapped, uh, decaled up. That's it's it's white, right? Or is it actually a different color? No, it's a different color. It's fully. It's a full wrap. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's talk about your wrap, wrap super then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's still currently wrapped. Um, it's uh, uh, still has the the uh, the Macross uh, livery on it. Uh, skull leader, just like yours. Yours was uh, a little bit more detailed. Mine is more simplified because it's made to look like the toy the that toy, we, yeah. we produced. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's still rolling like that. It's crazy. It's uh, it's a little loud. Originally, the car is my wife's. She was driving that to work. And when I told her what I want to do, she's like, yo, I'm not going to drive that to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, dude. So she's, she's like, you know, we just kind of garage it most of the time. And we take it out to Cars and Coffee, take it out to little local shows here and there. And, um, you know, whatever big show that we are attending that we're uh, exhibiting at, uh, we'll, we'll take it out there. But, yeah, it's 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 I love it, dude, because, you know, I, I'm big, being a big fan of of well, Robotech out here and, and watching Macross as well um, on VHS back in the day. Dude, like it was a dream come true. It was crazy. Do you um, ever get kind of tripped up because you're not quite sure if you want to say Robotech or Macross when people start talking about your car? It, it's I kind of try to gauge who I'm talking to and seeing if they're like one of those those people that like like oh you 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 watch the robotech it's I mean, it's all oh, about I know the people. or you know back and forth you i know, know the people <laughs> <laughs> you know it's and you know i i grew up you know because i when i was watching robotech as it came out here in the united states right that was my first anime that was the, the first one i really watched and i was really into um i would religiously watch saturday morning cartoons you know but i was never into it i was just there for the you know to the escape you know and just to be entertained for a few hours before I get on my bike and ride my ride down to my friend's house. Um, but Robotech was something that I like oh it's it's afternoon after school. I got to get home to watch this. You know it's 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 something that I had to do. Um, it and it, I'm not one of those guys who like was deep into the story uh, because I'm a, a kind of an art, artistic person. Mm-hmm. Um, I was more about the design of the mechs. Yeah. You know, the, the regalts, the, you know, the, the VF ones, the, the, all the way up to, to the, the, um, the, the, the cyclones, dude, all of the, those the cyclones are so I know, dude. sick. <laughs> I, I am so like everything. And, and it's, what's crazy to me is that in it, all three of the different generations, they were different cartoons. Yeah. And that, and but which we didn't bring know, it all we together. didn't know as kids. Yeah, we didn't know it as kids, but yeah. and it felt right. It felt like the right progression. All these experts know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. You know, but except for the you know Dana Sterling, you know, with her his mom with the green hair and the dad with the blue yeah. hair, and she came out blonde. I yeah. was a little tripped up about that. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, everything kind of worked. You know, it, and and. I guess it was also because we were kids, you know, we were, we were younger that back then. And it really didn't, we didn't take everything so seriously, mm-hmm. but, but what, looking at those designs, how they transform and then looking at the toys and that the toys transformed just like how they did in the cartoon was amazing to me because, you know, you, we've seen other transformations and, and things where you can't really translate it to reality because it was just so fantastical. Yep. Um, but these these did it just like the cartoon, and that's what really drew me to to Robotech at the time. It felt real, right? It felt like yeah, you're sitting there and you're and I've talked I've talked about this before, not necessarily on my podcast, but maybe as a guest of someone else's. Mm-hmm. You know, you're mm-hmm. sitting there in middle school and you're supposed to be paying attention, and you're staring out the window and just waiting yep. for your VF one to land outside <laughs> so you can go in there and save the fucking day. You know, exactly right. because they're they're mechs uh, they're piloted right yeah like, yeah transformers were probably my all-time favorite cartoon over like a duration mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it was always hard for me to imagine how you know sound wave i can walk around with sound wave in my hand and all of a sudden he's yeah. like 40 feet tall and stomping shit <laughs> yeah. it just never the math never worked for me right right yeah you're exactly right it, it, it was very it was, it was really based in fantasy where robotech almost felt like it could be real and sure. not that far into the future, you know, because they were using modern at the time, uh, airplanes yeah. and stuff. It was, and you know, what's one of my favorite things to do right now 
is seeing and searching out all the uh, photoshops of like, like real Tomcats and, and whatever that are uh, Photoshop to look like the, the VF ones, just even just the plane form, you know, not, not in the mech form, not the robot or not, not guardian mode, just the, the planes. And, and to me, it's just like, man, that looks freaking amazing. <laughs> I, I, I want to see it. I am hoping that they do. If they do the live action version, yeah, right. If they right. do it justice and do it right and not do, go too crazy and make it all futuristic because I mean, I, I think that's going to be the hardest part is to make sure that they do uh, the fans justice when they if they ever do make this movie. Yeah, it's kind of like. And I'll go back to, to Transformers really quick mm-hmm. is, you know, growing up, loving it so much. And I'm not trying to crap on the Michael Bay movies, but when you see it, you're like, what? That's not Optimus. What? That's <laughs> Bumblebee. Is it? He's not a yeah. badass. He's a recon <laughs> yeah. spy, micronized bot, and only has one friend, and it's a human. Like, what are yeah. we doing? And then now, <laughs> exactly. right now, they're coming out with stuff that seems more G1, and that's my yeah. fear too for Robotech. I'm like, I don't want to see a Robotech. Well, I will. I do want to see any Robotech movie, but <laughs> I don't want them to make a Robotech movie where I'm like. That's so weird yeah. and futuristic. I mean, other than yeah. a couple names, like, what do we? No, mm-hmm. no. But yeah, you know, Hollywood's <laughs> weird like that, man. Yeah, I know. They, you know, that's what. I, that's the one thing I'm really worried about is is how they're going to portray it. And um, I, like, yeah. What, so which which one was it? Was it um the the Bumblebee movie? The Bumblebee where, movie felt G one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when it started. Like, and but they didn't even call that one character uh, Starscream when he looked just like Starscream. Right. And I, that was kind of weird to me. Yeah. Was, did you, have you watched on Netflix? I think it's called war for Cybertron. No, it's I a haven't. three. Do you have Netflix? Yes, I do. Okay. It's a three. I don't necessarily want to call it, uh, like seasons, uh-huh. but it's like three chapters broken up by maybe five to eight episodes. Mm-hmm. You need to watch it. It's, it's, Kind of like a, a modern anime, mm-hmm. but it looks super weird because it's robots. Yeah. <laughs> almost real. And it takes like an episode or two to get used to it. I promise you, you're going to watch that. And you're going to be like, this is the best thing they've done for, really? the whole, for the whole thing. I mean, that's the only reason I even know about these. What's the new movie coming out with the, the primals or whatever? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. As yeah a, Beast Wars. Beast Wars, yes. Beast Wars, as yeah. kind of that, that purist knucklehead. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm not watching no Optimus Prime as a fucking monkey. You know? But <laughs> he's, a, he's a truck. He's not a fucking yeah, monkey. Exactly. But <laughs> wa- having watched that, and I just watched it last, like probably within the last year, I was like, this is this is amazing. This is, really? this is so cool. So now when the new uh, movie's coming out, I'm like, I know what that is. You know? <laughs> I'm kind of jaded though because uh, you know we've been talking. You know we work with Hasbro quite a bit. Where we we do a lot of work with them, and and they've uh, you know helped let us know some of the things that were going on. So like I, I have done a little bit of the research before Optimus Primal, um, and it's and it's, it's pretty cool. You know I, I do like what's going on there. But this I've never I haven't heard of that what you're talking about. So I'm going to put that on my queue for sure. I'll send it to you when we get off of here. Oh yeah. Going Definitely. back to the F-14 inspired, you know, bear attack. I yep. did that. I went to different uh, air and space museums just to see these aircraft yeah. up front. So, the, so that when I designed it, it was kind of like half cartoony, half realistic stuff. Yeah. And so somewhere nice. I, I do have a photo where I kind of keep in mind, we we're talking about Photoshop where I barely know how to use it. But I do, <laughs> there's a photo of me standing in front of an F-14. And I do have kind of the, the skull eater thing on there. So I'll, that's I'll cool. send that to you. It's, it's fun. Yes. It pops up every once in a while. That. Yeah. You know, it's, that's, that's what's fun about this whole, you know, doing this kind of stuff, you know, and you, you were the first one to do it. You were, and you went out and did it right. You know, doing the research. That's, I, I admire that, man. Not just, just like going out and just trying to, you know, just do something really quick. You, you actually took the time and, and did it justice. That's, that's the big thing. If you're going to go do it, do it right. And you, know, you the, did it right. Thank you. I appreciate it. The funny story on that is I didn't even think about doing that rap. Mm. I think I was out and I saw a Ferrari rap like a fighter jet once. I go, that's super badass. And I got up and I was looking at it and I go, you know what? I bet you I could do better. And then I was, at a, I was, I think I was at SEMA and there was a, a Corvette. It was really cool, but everything was like in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, 
uh, do, no step here or do not. I'm like, what is this? Why is this? Why is this caution <laughs> air entry thing like on the yeah, door yeah. handle? Like, what is this? Right, right. I could do better. And so I started playing around and I designed like a really loose one and sent it to a few friends. They're like, oh, yeah, you should totally do that. And I go, well, maybe I can get into SEMA. So once I got accepted into SEMA, then I went full ham on it. You know, oh, so, then, really? so then that yeah. just became the challenge, you know, how, yeah. how cool can I really make this, you know, and then yeah. going back to what we we're talking about earlier between the whole Macross, Macross and, um, yeah. and Robotech, I'm like, okay, because my original design was kind of like the Macross version and I never really watched Macross. I was, a, I was a hundred percent Robotech guy. We just, yeah. it just yeah. wasn't available. And then when I got older, it just wasn't, the, you know, I didn't just, like gravitate to it, Yeah, yeah. but I had the, Same. I had What's his name? It's not Rick. What what what's Rick's like, oh, Macross um, name? Ichiro or something? Ichiro, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had that instead with the red, black, and white. And I go, no one's yeah, gonna recognize yeah. this. Right. I'm right. gonna have to do, you know, the Roy slash Rick skull leader, because that's mm-hmm. universal between both brands. And yep. You know, that's, that's right. what we ended up going with. So that's with your cool, design, right? like what are some of the challenges? What are some of the challenges that come with being at Jada Toys coming up with some stuff? Well, so the art design, I I didn't design it uh, personally. I had uh, one of my, because at the time I was the director of product development for the vehicle site. Okay. Um, and uh, so I we're have, talking about uh, on your Supra. Yeah. So okay. the Supra, um, I didn't have time to do much of the designing. I was doing a lot of the more of the administrative stuff and, and talking with, with licensors and um, doing a bunch of different things because, you know, when, when you're the, the director, the head of the department, you have, uh, you know, a team that does most of the design work. Um, and I just told him, Hey, this is the vehicle. And he's, he knows about Robotech. He was, but he's a lot younger. He's, he's like, he was maybe three, four years out of graduating from, from uh, college. Yeah. So he's, he's pretty young. Um, but he went in and we went, he went through with me maybe three, four or five different iterations before we, we said, okay, this is the one that we want to go with. And then, had to go back and forth with the the Harmony Gold and and the people who approve for Robotech right. at the same time. So they had to go through and do a lot of their tweaks and stuff too. So um, I a lot of it, uh, the, some of the original iterations were quite different from what you had, um, and I think your your design influenced ours because through uh, the licensor because they wanted mm-hmm. to do they were they were they were referencing yours quite a bit when we were doing ours. And uh, and we can see that, and we're like, I mean, I knew there was going to be a little bit of a backlash where people were saying, "Oh, you know, you just copy that," because of how much they wanted us to do similar to yours, like certain details. But we couldn't go into detail because of the process right. that we have for for the decos. You know, it's 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 called tampo printing, uh, where it's basically a rubber stamp that hits the graphics onto the vehicle. So you can't do a lot of the, the like you know the the uh the 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 dirt and the grind that right. you had on yours yep. um doing all the the little paneling and the rivets it, it starts to get really expensive when you start doing all that kind of stuff so we have to uh simplify it quite a bit before we were able to get it approved to a point where it was affordable to do and it could get approved at the same time right because that's so, the that's the difference even you know i can understand that i i went to school for industrial design before i failed out you know it's funny because the last class i had was a science class it's not that I, <laughs> it's not that I couldn't do it. I just wasn't the right timing for me. But, yeah, yeah, you know, I understand that process, and it's got to be you know mass produced, and you know, yep. every every extra line on a, on like the die cast, right? Something is yep. cast. Every extra design line, that's one more thing that's going to cost money. Yep. So exactly. you know the level of detail. So I I I get that. Um, yeah. But no, that's and, man, that's, and cool. that's the time too. At the time. Um, things were changing in our factories, you know, like I'm sure you, you're aware, like, you know, a lot of factories in China because of the internet, it, which is, you know, I think is awesome. They're starting to see like how uh, much, like how, how different Western countries are compared to theirs. And they're now asking for more money and they're there. They, you know, things mm-hmm. are getting more mm-hmm. expensive and I I'm all for it. You know, I want them to make their money because that's it. They're, they work hard. I've been out there and I've seen them, they work hard and they, they do their stuff. And it's just the government is, is, you know, kind of holds them back a little bit. Um, but uh, 
they the um what was my my word <laughs> I lost my train of thought. But um we're talking the design process and the cost yeah. and stuff like that. So okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the cost of things started going up because we were paying factory workers more money. Um, cost of goods and, and materials started going up, so we had to even cut back even more. So the 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 toys could have been a lot more detailed than you know when we first pitched it to to the Robotech people, the licensors. Um, it was quite different, and then we had to cut back quite a bit because of the cost, material cost, the labor cost, all that stuff started getting more and more expensive. Um, so it was it, what we see now wasn't. The same as the sure. original designs, for sure. Um, but I'm still pre- very happy with what we got out of it, and I think it looks really cool. Um, it was a good compromise, and uh, you know, I-, I can't complain. I think we we did good with it. Did you get a lot of blowback? A lot of comments and stuff. It wasn't really like us, uh, so not on our pages. So on our like social media pages, you know, we didn't get a lot of that. Uh, but it was when they were starting to show up on the like the Robotech and the Macross uh, uh, sure. groups and yeah. stuff, you know, because, and then, you know, and I get it. I understand it because there's, there's a lot of people out there, you, you know, they, 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 they know your car. They didn't want, at the same time, they didn't understand what we were doing. You know, it, ours, the whole thing was just like a reimagining of what if they were race car drivers instead of pilots. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's kind of the, you know, the, the whole thing of our, that, that, toy line that we're making which is hollywood rides most of it is is replica vehicles but when there is no rep no vehicle that is associated with a character we do what's called uh uh, inspired by well there's actually three kind of categories there's inspired by where we take the character and then put the like make the vehicle an extension of the character so we try to find vehicles that have similar characteristics so for example uh, spider-man we used the 2017 Ford GT because the headlights kind of resembled what the the eyes of, of Spider-Man looked like. So when we designed it, yeah. the, the the graphics were like his suit, and then around the headlights we put that like eyeliner shape that he has on his uh, on his mask. So it it's an extension of Spider-Man. Um, then there's the the replicas, which is like Batman. We'll do, we'll do the Batmobiles. And then there's uh, like the Itasha type type stuff where it's just billboarding the character on the side of the vehicle. Um, we didn't want to do the the billboarding. We didn't want to do that for Robotech because we found we saw the opportunity to to use the same graphics from the from the ships on the on the vehicles. Very much inspired sense. by your vehicle from when you we saw it originally. I mean, I when I first saw it, what how shoot so long ago when I saw your car. I was like, man, that would be cool as a model, but we never had the license for for any of the anime properties. Um, and with this Hollywood ride line, uh, it gave us the opportunity to do it, and I jumped on it quick. I'm shocked they gave me the nod on it. I mean, you know, we won't have to get into too much detail about HG. I mean, I have good relationships with them, but it's yep. still shocked that they gave the nod on it. As mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of a personal expression, which they like. But as people from China started making miniatures of it, yeah, you know, yeah. then it. The, I mean, Tommy was like, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to kill yeah. it? I go, well, let me let me talk to these people and see if I can strike out some sort of a deal because it'd be a loss. Mm-hmm. Because who, who doesn't want a fucking miniature of their car, right? Yeah, right. So I'm right. like, well, I don't know. Let me just talk. Let's see. You know, and uh-huh. I talked to a few people and, you know, everyone's like, ah, too bad. It sucks. Da, da, da. You know, and this is what happens mm-hmm. when you get ripped off. And I said, look, it's, it's all going to work out. And it, and it did. You know, mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't get any financial gain from it, but people got the product. But I'm right. I'm still surprised that they're like, all right, cool, you know. But yeah, yeah. I think it's awesome, dude, what you guys are doing. Um, when they st- first started popping up, you know, I, I, it's kind of mixed, right? It's like, oh, man. Yeah. And then I was like, well, I'm going to get. I'm going to get a new NSX and then maybe I'll do a version yeah. two, but then everyone's going to think I'm top. I'm copying this Jada toy <laughs> Supra. Like, <Yeah. laughs> that's, that's seriously was going through my head. But, dude, dude. <laughs> you know what's funny? Mm. Two hours ago, a friend of mine, Ozzy, sent me mm-hmm. a picture of him holding the Skull Leader Supra Jada mm-hmm. Toys yeah. from Target. I'm like, yeah. dude, I haven't talked to this guy in like three years. I go, hey, funny thing. I'm talking to, to Jada Toys Mike in a few hours. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's so crazy. But when that first started popping up, I'm like, I think it was awesome because I never thought I'd see the day where we'd see anything Robotech licensed in our stores. You know, and, and that's that's another thing, you know, the reason why we went that direction, because there was other directions that we could have went. We do, you know, miniature die cast figures that are not non-posable. We could have done figurines in, in a, that are a certain scale. Um, but the thing is, is everyone's doing that kind of stuff already. Yep. You know, we got we got Kid Logic out in there. We got, you know, the Bandai. Or, I mean, there's a bunch of companies that are doing some cool stuff. Um, and we wanted to do something a little bit different and we wanted to stand out. Um, and, you know, we still have the, the, the license is, I think it's still a great license. There's a, there's a following. I mean, dude, how long has it been since there's been any real content for Robotech? And that, that first generation stuff is still selling like crazy. Years. Like, yeah. Years. Decades. Like Yam, Yam, Yamato is still making, you know, the original, uh, you know, skull leader, all of them, even like Ben Dixon's car, like ship, like he's they're, they're doing his and, and people are all over it. You know, it's, it's crazy how how much of a of a how how popular Robotech is with the fans that grew up with it. You know, the people who are hardcore into it, they'll buy what you know what's available for sure. Dude, Ben Dixon, yeah, that guy, <laughs> that guy never got to take a bite of his steak. <laughs> he, he took one cut. And, oh man! And that he was, died that, five that, minutes later. That, dude, that scene hurt. That was heavy. When I saw that that scene, I was like, oh my god! I, I think that was the first time. I watched a cartoon where one of like where a, a big character died. I no, it was, was like, no that, like legit. That was the first time on American television that anything like yeah. that was allowed, and that's what took so long for it to happen is because it was oh, too really? violent for for us. Yeah, I do. I've that's, done. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the first time because we it taught us kids about death yeah. and consequence. Yeah, yeah. I remember going back to school that after that episode, I'm like. Dude, do you guys see that? <laughs> and we were like, we we're all in shock. We we're just like jaws dropped and like, wow, that was that was nuts. And then Roy, like, <laughs> dude, dude, yeah. <laughs> oh man, spoiler! Uh, I yeah, spoiler alert, scared. people. If you're about you know forty years <laughs> late on this one, but spoiler yeah. alert. But I mean, dude. think about what what we had. We had GI Joe Transformers, and yeah. the, the worst thing that ever happened to someone GI Joe is they go into a coma for a couple episodes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. You know. Did you ever watch um, Resolute? Maybe. G.I. Joe? The G.I. Joe Resolute, that, that, that one version where it was like pretty, pretty more, more adult oriented. No, I don't think. Actually, no, I don't think so. No. I think it's called Resolute. You should check that out because that was the way, like, we started, I was watching that probably, you know, eight, nine, ten years ago. It's, that's when it was out. And, um, oh, I definitely was, haven't seen it then. I just, I just wrote oh, it down. It's, 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 it's good. It's, it's, um, it's the way that, you know, it's the way we always thought that GI Joe should be being older now. Yeah. Like, you know, it, that's, it was, it was, you know how, like, there's like cartoons now that are, you know, a little bit more violent and a little bit more, you know, uh, caters to more to adults. Right. That's what this was. And, and, and it was, it was really good. We were like all over. And then it made, action figures for it and it was just man we were all over that as in the toy uh, department here at, at jada toys it was we were all about it it was really good you know you was, said that that's pretty cool um i like i said i wrote that down i can't wait to, to watch it so you gave me that and i gave you the transformers yeah, thing earlier yes, so thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> right back at you bro. <laughs> that'll be the homework um yeah a lot of people ask me if i'm gonna re rewrap my car and i'm i'm this is gonna be breaking Right, breaking news, but I've thought about actually decaling it up based after yeah. you guys' Supras. Dude, so wait up. Uh, we are, this is also kind of breaking news, is we might be working on getting your year uh, NSX. The OG? Not the OG, the, the new one. Oh. Well, that'll be cool. Uh, so maybe well, there might be something that could probably be in the works between us. I don't know. We'll yeah, see. That, that'd we'll see be super we can make cool. Happen. <laughs> but you know, you, you said it, you know, and making it kind of, you know, um, more about if this, if this artificial character, whether it's Power Rangers, right? If this artificial yeah. character 
is driving this car as an extension of them. And that's mm -hmm. one thing I kind of wanted to do is instead of making it look like a fighter jet, making it look like yeah. well, what if it was a car? And so that's what some of my more recent, uh, you know, liveries have been. Like, what cool. if what if it was a Veritech race car instead of a Veritech? Yeah. Da -da? And, and so yeah. people that don't understand, like, what the hell is that shit? What are you? But the yeah. people who know, yeah. You know, oh, dude, yeah. There's there's people like like uh, to me. It's like every, uh, when I go to cars and coffee, like ninety percent of the people don't know what it is, right? Yeah. Um, it's just I get I, I'm I'm more than excited when that one person comes up and says. Uh, Roy, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? or just, <laughs> that's that, the payoff. That know it. Yeah, it's the payoff, and I'm not doing it for anyone else, really. You know, I did it. Well, I did it for the company to 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 help promote the product, right? But at the same time, you know, selfishly, it's some one of my the things that I would have, you know, I've been wanting to do for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and you know, realistically, when someone fixes up a car, you're not really doing it for everyone else you're doing it for yourself right you shouldn't be doing it for everyone else you should be doing it for your own your own pleasure and your own you know because you you really like cars and and you really like whatever you're putting into it and the design you're putting into it right you're not you're not just doing it just because you want people to say oh that's cool i don't know it validates it though you know i i, I it get does. it you know it, you do it for you but it feels great when you put all that work or, or whatever it, it does it's like this yeah. is a gift that i've given to the fans and i just happen yeah. to be a part of this as well but then if you don't appreciate it do you is it really something that you can be proud of no you know because you you want to do something that you can appreciate and then and if someone else does appreciate it as well i think that's more rewarding than just doing it for everyone else and not, you not like really liking it you know, there's a lot of people like that actually in the car community. We could probably oh, yeah. count on our hands people that we personally sure. know that we're we're probably friends with. Yeah. We're just kind of like, look, I don't really. That's not really <laughs> how I do stuff, but you know, right. that's cool for you. Um, I get it. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. There's, I remember, you know, it's it's there was a there was a guy who who fixed up his car. I'm not going to say the car because it's 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 <laughs> you'll be known know as, soon as, you say it's, it. yeah. <laughs> as soon as you say it. Um, but he's like. Like he was saying, like he was criticizing how someone fixed up their car, but he did his car. It was such a unique vehicle, um, that that it was super. Like it was, it was either you loved it or hated it. Right? Oh yeah, polarizing. And yeah, it was, it was super polarizing. And and people were like, the, who didn't like it would constantly say, you know, like, oh, why did he do that? You know, he should have done it like this or like that. And then he was like, oh, I don't do it for you. I do it for myself. But he, on, on, the, on the flip side, when he's looking at other people's cars, oh, he's doing that wrong. He should have done it mm. this way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it, it, you know, you, I, 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 that's one, you know, I don't get along with it. I, well, I, it's not, I don't know him that well to say I get along with or don't get along with him. I just know we're, we're acquaintances. We, sure. you know, we know the same people. It's just that kind of rubbed me the wrong way because, you know, that's, that's, you know, if you're, going to do something that you think is original and, and you do it for yourself because you liked it and you wanted to get people's eyes on it. You don't talk shit about other people's stuff, you know, because, or, 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 or if you, if you get, you know, if someone criticizes you, you should accept that criticism. If you're going to criticize someone else. No, I agree. You know 100%. I mean? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's, that's why, you know, when, when we were, when I was hearing a lot of, uh, Lash back from uh, you know from showing the super off, um, you know it was something that I'm happy with, and then a few people will get it. Um, and the the my biggest fear though was was meeting you for the first time, and it couldn't have been any better. Though. <laughs> you 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 made it a lot easier when we first met because I knew <laughs> that that time was gonna come, boy. <laughs> One day, this motherfucker, I'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> keep your gun ready and everything <laughs> yeah, yeah. i was like man i know you. i'm gonna meet him and then when you came up and i'm like i kind of recognize this guy and then then you when you mentioned it it all clicked i'm like oh and my heart just kind of jumped <laughs> for a second there and then as we started talking i'm like nah this guy's cool <laughs> i was like this is your super huh this ain't, yeah, yeah, yeah. This ain't, this ain't <laughs> garbage homie yeah <laughs> 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 no that was look dude it's mutual i'm like holy shit that's the supra 
And yeah. they're like, that's my car. I'm like, holy shit, this is your car? <laughs> yeah. You know, and I don't know who Jada Toys Mike is. You know, I know who Jada yeah. Toys is, but I'm like, yeah. wait, this is, this is, this is fucking badass, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> I just, oh man, I, I was bummed hearing that you got rid that you let that car go, man. The car just went to um, Chicago. So Did it really? The, my, my friend that I sold the car to, I had to remove the wrap before, but he, uh-huh. he sold it after like a year. But oh that's, really? That's he's a good friend of mine, but he's you know, he's a car guy, but not really, but is right. you know because there's so many different types of car guys, right? Yeah, yeah. But I yeah. just he just wasn't prepared to take over a a '90s mm-hmm. GDM that's been mm-hmm. like heavily modified. You know, he's used right, Ferraris right, right. and stuff like that. Basically, turnkeys because he'll buy a really nice car and he'll throw exhaust and wheels and he always gets rid of things better than he got them. Yeah, but when it comes down to the little things, it's like, hey man, uh, my radio doesn't work or my my seat doesn't work. I'm like, well, have you checked the fuse? No, where's that? And it's like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll be over in a little bit, type of deal. Yeah, yeah. So it's I kind of bittersweet you. seeing the car go because it mm-hmm. it never felt weird because it had to had to go for my Type S. Yeah, but I yeah. also knew it was 20 minutes down the road. Yeah, if right. I ever exactly. wanted to see it, you know, I might yeah, see it at Cars yeah. and Coffee or NS Expo, but. Right. You know, it's and, it, and you you sold it to someone you knew, so it was yeah, like it was accessible still. It's it's in the kind right. of in the family, you can uh, so to say. So I could have driven it whenever you know. I wanted to. Yeah, he, he would have happily thrown me in the keys. Um, That's cool. But it's it was a dream car, and like what what were your dream cars? You know, were you into cars as a little kid? I know you're into Robotech. You know, yeah. but some people get into things different times of life. Sometimes cars are just their job. This isn't the case of you. Your your job is toys that you know kind of focuses on. You know, transportation, I, I was, but yeah, cars were a big thing growing up for me. Um, my dad had a, a 67, 67 or 68, 68 uh, Chevy Camaro. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and it's still in the family, which is nice. Uh, and my, my cousin who owns it right now has been a, done a really good job. He kept it really clean, uh, restored, slightly modified, not too crazy. Um, then my dad got into Z's. Um, he had a 280Z, uh, and um, it, that was really cool. It was the first car that I ever heard talk. It said, door is slightly ajar. Uh, oh. Yeah, I had one of those those automatic seat belts. It was like super high tech. It was crazy. And then, um, but after when I got into high school, uh, that was when like the the whole, I don't know if you are, are familiar with Battle of the Imports. Mm-hmm. Um, Battle of the Imports was um, well. It actually started with the the street racing scene out here in in California, in Southern California, LA, uh, Silmar area, Gardena. Those are like the this, this street racing thing. This was this was kind of like what we had in our generation as to what today is the 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 street takeovers are. It's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes and no. No, you kinda, know, we we weren't that irresponsible. Yeah. You know, but it was underground um, drag racing. Yeah, and, and, yeah. It, it was. Yeah, it was and fast it was kind and of, furious before fast. Anyone exactly. really knew what it, fast it was and furious actually, was. Yeah, from if I if I you know if if those those uh, uh, videos I watch on YouTube are correct, the you know that's the scene that kind of spurred on the Fast and Furious mm-hmm. uh, uh, movie. It was actually called Red Line in the beginning, right? So anyways, I was uh, during, you know, right before that time in high school, it was all about mini trucks. So I was my car that I really wanted to get was a Mazda B2200. Yes, I didn't have it. <laughs> One of my best friends had it. But yes, shut up. Really? Yeah, Mike, my girl, Mike Howard. If you're listening, shout out to Mike Howard and his tan, <laughs> his tan B2200. My 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 friend. The one reason why I wanted one is is one of our friends, Jay, had had a, a tan B twenty two hundred. That's funny, dude. It was the freaking coolest thing. I in in high school, um, I DJed. I used to DJ. You know, me and my crew used to DJ the high school dances, like with within like uh, I don't know, maybe a twenty mile radius. You know, from from where we are, all the high schools we would do them. And uh, in my high school we would do the halftime event, you know, for the football game. So we would bring out our, our, our big speakers and to bring them out, we rolled in with my friends B2200 with the speakers and the equipment in the back to set up. And like the, all the eyes that turned as we were driving down the the track next to the football field to set this stuff up. 
it was it was amazing. People you could hear people like, man, that truck is cool. That that was rad. It was it was crazy. And that's why I wanted that truck because it looked so good. Slammed um, on some thirteens. Yes, sir. Some wire wheels <laughs> if you can afford them. Really? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Exactly, dude. It was it was it was good. It was it was freaking nice. Um and then after so the, the JDM stuff started coming in shortly after that. So the, the dots in five tens, um mm-hmm. uh Celica, Civics, all that stuff started getting getting big. Um and then at the end of high school, uh right after I graduated actually, I was able to get one of my my dream cars, which was a ninety one Toyota MR two. Non turbo though, but it was an MR two. Um and that's what I drove to college for for the first couple of years. Um, and like, I was, I never really dreamed big when it came to cars until I got older and then started making a little bit more money where those big dream vehicles were more attainable. Um, sure. and then I started to think, you know, oh, maybe, you know, cause I never really dreamed for things beyond my means. I always like try to think, get, you know, like think big, but, but not too far away where I can't get it. You know, it's, it was always a goal. It was like, you know, like when you have goals, you always try to do your little milestones. You get here, then you, then you reach a little farther after you get to that point. That's how I always kind of felt with my, my selfish goals is always get something that I can obtain. So it's baby steps rather than big leaps. I get it. Yeah. It's, that's, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where I was. How about you? Were you, were you big on uh, vehicles when you were younger? You know, I, I've always liked cars. I think, um, yeah. you know, you watch and I wanted the General Lee, obviously I wanted oh, yeah. Knight Rider. I wanted the fall <laughs> yeah. guy truck, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anything on TV, you know, I wanted those vehicles. Um, fucking, I wanted Airwolf, you know? Oh, dude. Airwolf. Best theme song it's... ever. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah, I mean, I, you know, like a lot of kids, I think I started getting into middle school and. You know, and maybe in high school, and I had the posters on the wall. I may have had like a Lamborghini or a Vector or oh, something, yeah. but I still didn't really know that much. And then I, yeah. you know, subscribed to Road and Tracks because I had cars quarterly and Auto Week because we didn't have that, right? We, we, right, our, right. our consumption was these monthly or quarterly magazines, right? And, yeah. or we would go, what I'm sure you did the same thing. You know, you go to the car dealership and you, and you pose next to cars late at night <laughs> yeah. and you get the brochure and that's what you're staring at. That's your dream car. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it wasn't until high school that I, that I saw and fell in love with an NSX and that became my attainable dream car. But yeah. I also wanted an RX seven, you know, an FDR X seven, oh. you know, so I had that pamphlet and then, um, obviously, which, year? which uh, F, 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 FD, F, F, C, um, it was it's an okay, F, FD. That's the ninety three, right? Ninety three to ninety eight yeah, or yep. whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, because I didn't, I didn't even have a car until I was like twenty. Um, uh, ah, yeah. yeah. But I had friends with cars, but no one really had a yeah. cool car. Eric Wilson <laughs> had a cool. He had like an FD, like a I don't know if he had like a ninety two, you know, RX seven or whatever. But I, that's I think to me that car is like the ultimate like JDM modifying a car you want to modify because it just like there's so much cool thing it, it looks like a mech just driving well so if you get the right stuff <laughs> the conquest and the stereon right yeah yeah i used to oh, love yes. those too <laughs> that's right dude <laughs> they're like transformers yeah totally man <laughs> so yeah dude. i love those cars you know and then oh, hell yeah. that's just kind of how it but but you know we had to dream right so everything it's almost like the michael jordan effect where it, you didn't have access to it so you clung on to any access you can get right which kind of right. built the mystique and the aura of this yep. awesome dream car, you know, and it's, yeah. that's kind of the challenge. It's what I wanted to ask you as well. It's like, what do you think kids do? Cause every, everything they want is in front of them and it's not their fault. Yeah. But it's, what do they dream about? I, you know, it's tough, man. It's it, like, it's crazy. I don't, I don't know. I, like, cause for a while there, kids didn't even know cars. Um, yeah, it felt like it. Yeah. I will. I, I can tell you firsthand, like we would go to, shows like say la auto or or even go to um like s- smaller car shows that were where families would bring their kids out and the kids were like not interested they, the the only cars that they know oh that's bumblebee they don't right. know what kind of car it is they, they know bumblebee that's it but now it's starting to change a little bit i you know uh just even la- la- at the fuel fest that we were at 
we had cars. I mean, it might be a little different kind of demographic because those are hardcore, you know, car people, but kids like 12 years old and younger, maybe down to eight years old. One kid, I think it was about 10 years old, came over and said, oh, that's an R34. That's he badass. Knew. Yeah, that's when I was like, okay, they're coming back, you know, <laughs> because there was a while there that no kid like knew what cars were. It had to be something that they saw on Transformers. You know, they didn't they didn't know any of it because people who buy our Fast and Furious stuff, it's our age. That's it's not the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're the ones dumpster diving at uh, yeah. the toy store as well for exactly. the little cars. It's not, yeah. <laughs> yep, it's always grown yeah. men. It's grown men right now, and and um, right now it's kind of it's it's transitioning. There's this like this whole uh, tween collector that's starting to emerge now, which mm-hmm. is really good. Um, and, and it's, uh, you're, we're, we're seeing that, you know, these kids, these younger kids that are not like, like the, the pre-college guys right now, but the, the, they're, they're starting to go again into high school. Maybe middle schoolers are starting to know cars again. They're starting to, to get into that, that, that collecting um, and seeing value in, in good quality products. You know, so it's we're we're hoping that kind of continues rather than society kind of changing their mindset a little bit again and and you know going a different direction. It's it's to me it's like right when like the fixie bicycles came into play is when every all the kids stopped wanting to drive as soon as they got um, you know of age to be able to drive. You know, it's it's before when we were younger. It's like as soon as you got were able to get your license, I want to get my license and and go. Yeah, you kids can't wait. The, yeah, couldn't wait. But now kids like for during that time, they could care less about getting their license because you know they were just riding their bikes around or just in their house, just playing on the computer the whole time. It's, or it's I think I think uh, there was a study that came out, and there's kids like a certain age they don't want to drive; they want to Uber everywhere. Yeah, right? yeah. But you're but yeah. you're right, and 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 it's it's refreshing to see. It brings a smile on my face when I go to a car event and I see kids like little kids, like my grandson. Yeah, I'm, I'm granddad. So my grandson Zeke, he's four and a half, and I mean, he knows what an NSX looks like, whether yeah. it's a big yeah. one or a little one. Yeah, and he's excited about cars. You know, see, that's just, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, there's still car. Yeah. So there's there, there's two kinds of kids uh, that we're seeing. Um, there is the collector the kid who knows what he's getting and, and wants to get them all right uh, whether it's pokemon or cars it's it's they want to get them all then there's the kids that are compilers they just want a bunch of whatever it is that they're into at the time and mm-hmm. they don't necessarily need to know what it is they just want as much as they can they can get their hands on um and and we're seeing before it was mostly the compilers that are you know kids that just want a bunch of stuff i and i think it has a lot to do with this whole new format of you know uh of tv shows that are you know especially in netflix they they don't do you know there's no more saturday morning cartoons um they just give them the whole season and then they can binge watch it in one night Um, when we were younger we had to wait a whole week for the next episode to come out right so what do we do in between the time of each episode? We wanted to go buy the product to be able to act out that last episode and 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 hold us over until that next episode came out. Yep. They don't have a chance now to to get emotionally invested into a cartoon or a character or whatever because they can just binge watch it and now they're on to the next thing. So when they binge watch something, it's like, oh, these are cool. And the the hype at that time uh is wants them to just get a bunch of like product gotta, real I gotta quick. have it right now yeah. i gotta have it right now and then they're and once that next cartoon or whatever comes out they're done with it and they they don't want to buy it anymore you and do. that's not the way uh retail stuff works we have to have things on shelf for at least three four or five months or a year for it to to be successful you know so we, we can't just put something out for you know for a couple months and then take it off shelf and replace it with something else it has to have longevity and that binge watching style of cartoons nowadays is killing the industry. It's the instant access. Yep, for sure. You know everything is now, and so you're is you, are you you're seeing that have an impact on your uh, industry directly? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, definitely. You know because like like man, I, I remember watching you know like GI Joe when I was younger, um like. 
you you had it, you the whole season was was you know you're you're going you're waiting for the next week to see that next episode and then you 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 know what what do you want to do in between the whole time that you're you're waiting you just you know you want to still experience that that cartoon and you so you get the toys you get the the product um yeah. or if you're yeah. into comics you know you get that next comic book and you're waiting for that next comic to come out imagine if comic books came out with all the the whole series in one shot and you you know you're just sitting there and reading the whole time um i mean that that could work but it, the like It'd be terrible it, yeah yeah I, I i there's no anticipation there's no yeah. build up anymore you just you know it's all there you don't you may not even read them all because oh i got them all i can read them whenever i want to you, you know, know it's uh, you know it's funny is there anything worse and a lot of people can't identify with this now but you get home from school you watch your show on Friday or it'll be Thursday and then you get home Friday and it's not on because some other stupid things on and it was, it was continued from Thursday, but then Monday it's not even the continuation of Thursday. It's just some other random fucking episode. (laughs) That's like the worst thing. (laughs) That's the worst. Yeah. I hear you. (laughs) I learned that, uh, GI Joe was, it it wasn't even because it's funny. You think back, you're like, Oh, I used to watch that. Every day after school, I used to watch Transformers. Yeah. I used to watch Robotech every day yeah. after school for like six yeah. years, right? Yeah. And then you learn it's just a bunch of like mini series all yep. slapped together back to back. Yeah. And only <laughs> only designed to sell us shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it. You know, it's like, oh, there's a new character. Oh, I guess I can save up my GI Joe points and mail it in so I can get. Uh, yeah. fucking William the Fridge Perry character, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Remember that shit? <laughs> I do, dude. Damn, dude, you reach way back pocket for that dude, one. You huh? inspired that in me to reach back. <laughs> <laughs> you can even buy it. You had to mail your shit off and wait, dude. you know, four to six weeks to get it in the mail. And yeah, and, and and see, like nowadays, if you were to do that, four to six weeks, you're 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 not interested in that product anymore or that property. Well, you're asking for a you're refund done. and a tracking number. Yeah, you're like, oh, what's this shit? Oh, I bore this four weeks ago. Nah, I'm done. What's the what's the next thing? I'll tell you a real life a version of that. So yeah. I'm I'm a huge MCU guy. Love yeah. the movies. Like I love yeah. the movies. I don't have yeah. hardly anything. Well, I guess I have a bunch of like little stupid shit. But when Sideshow comes out with stuff, yeah, and it's like, oh my god, this you know Mark Fifty. This is pre order. Damn, it's four hundred and fifty yeah. bucks. Ah, fuck it. All right. You know, I put my deposit down. I've never got anything. I always cancel like six months later before the thing <laughs> yeah, even comes out. Really? <laughs> That's funny. But that, you know, collectors these days they they'll wait a year out, dude. Sure. Yeah, it's crazy. Did you, I don't know if you're into Voltron, but Saito just is it Saito? I think they just announced their their Voltron um, Go Lion. It's 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 nice. It's really nice. I um, well, I love the Voltron. But did you know the Voltron cars and and the lions yeah. actually have nothing to do with your, with each other? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, I, I know that. It's like only the name. Well, you probably do know in your, in your industry. It's just, it's the name. It's like, what? It's the name, yeah. They have nothing to do. <laughs> nothing other than the name. That's crazy. They did try to do a crossover, though, I think, uh, in, in American cartoons where they, they did, they kind of were in the same episode, I think. I think I remember seeing that. There's a third Voltron that they tried to put. It was like this this three robot thing. It's a robot that combined to have six arms. <laughs> I don't know. It was it was it was wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that it was, it was, that's another yeah, case, dude. Work. You know, um, <laughs> Friday Friday you're watching the Lions, and and, yeah. and on Monday you're watching Cars. You're like, what the fuck yeah. is this? <laughs> exactly, dude. Don't get me wrong, though, dude. I'm all about the Cars one too. I I I I I, I collect the. I have, a, I have a bunch of the Voltron stuff. Uh, you know, I'm all about that right now. Well, not even right now, but. You know what I'm actually looking for is a really good quality SDF one. Um, oh. My friend was, dude. I want a night, dude. What I really want is that freaking 120 scale Gerwalk, dude. The that uh, good smile, uh, Max Factor, whatever. Yeah, you know, that big one. Have you seen it? It's like it's probably about two and a half feet wide. Isn't that in, thing in, like the Guardian form? Three grand or whatever. Dude, when it was so, first came out, five hundred bucks. Now you can't find it for anything less than three grand. That's a model, right? Or is it the sculpture? It's a model. Yeah, it's okay. a model. I know exactly. Yeah, I've seen pictures of it on those pages. Yeah, but then the oh my, who makes someone makes this? I'm a, I think Prime One makes like the, I think Rick Hunter's. Yeah, and it's going through, but, and they I think they have an SDF one too. 
Yeah. It's expensive uh, as hell. My wife would kick my yeah, ass if okay. I brought that home. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, man. I, I, if I get any more stuff like that, my wife will kill me too. Like the SDF one, though, is like for me, um, one of the coolest things I saw was uh, a model of the SDF one, but with a cityscape in scale to it. I've seen it. As if, dude that thing is so cool like if i were to see, and, and and seeing these photoshops that look photorealistic where they have like the sdf1 in the background and 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 the and the tomcats or the you know, 14s in front dude that gets me all kind of giddy dude I, it's like i want to see this movie already if it is going to be like that if it's not going to be like that i'm going to i'm going to boycott that shit but <laughs> dude at least with your wife like you could justify it. like honey it's for work yeah it's yeah it's a work well, study jada <laughs> toys it's a work study Right off some of this stuff too, dude. Dude, I'll just yeah, I just, uh, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> it's crazy, well, Mike. Dude, yeah. This is this has been great. Um, I oh yeah, I got I got one more question for you, and sure, then we'll sure. hit you with some fun Q and A, some right. quick fire stuff. But yeah, you know, I mentioned earlier perception versus reality. So, yeah. and I, I I think I would liken that to what you do at work. You know, what's and you may not know the perception. Well, mm-hmm. maybe just reading the forums, you 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 do uh, kind of pick up on it. But what is a big perception out there of of you and Jada Toys? You know your position, and what's the reality? So hey, I I have one. I think that's a, a perfect example of that. Um, people uh, think that we can because we're manufacturers of toys that we can just make any product, um, especially their own cars Mm -hmm. right and the 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 thing is um they call they contact us all the time saying hey you should make my car i I, it'll i I know it'll sell for sure because it's so popular at the car shows right um it's my sema car yeah yeah Yeah. so there's that i mean we're we're totally down to do stuff like that we have done stuff like that um but our on our end of it we need to one make sure that the that it's able to be made into toy format right some some things are just really difficult to do like i don't know if you've seen that that gold skyline gtr with all the etching in the, yeah. every panel yeah that thing I mean, that would be really difficult to do justice for we wouldn't be able to do something like that that, that would be ridiculous um but it would be awesome to do we would love mm-hmm. to it's just not doable you know especially unless we we do it and and charge like 300 bucks for a 124 scale because that's you know probably how much it would cost At to least. be able to yeah exactly you know so so um that um and then we have to make sure that we have the license to be able to do that vehicle yeah, you know if, if yep if if i if if your car is say you know some crazy exotic that's modified and customized for example, uh, Porsche doesn't really like us to do anything other than their factory models. Mm-hmm. We can't, uh, or if, unless it's on the race circuit. So if you see it on the race circuit, we can replicate it. But if it's just a show car that, that has uh, like heavily modified and it may look awesome and cool and right up our alley, they might not approve us to do it because it's not, uh, they, they have their their uh their image to uphold right so they they want to make sure that it's on brand for them because people the think time. i own the car it's customized it's creative but once yeah. you start getting big business involved and jada toys is big business and yes. all the red tape rolls out exactly yep so it's not that easy it's not like we don't want to do it because we want to because we think that's you guys are those all those guys who are asking for this are the demographic that we're looking for. Those are the guys who are keeping us in business. And we want to do stuff like that for them. Sometimes we just can't, you know, so it's tough. So it's, it's not that easy. Um, the, you know, they can ask all they want. Um, sometimes it's easy though. Like for example, I don't know if you know, Alan who has that, um, a, the gold, uh, a 86. I don't. Um, he's so Alan, yeah, Alan, he has a, 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 a old school, uh, Tirreno. Mm-hmm. Um, with Watanabe wheels and and it's gold. It's uh, been a bunch of magazines. Um, like his car was a perfect match for us because 
it's not too crazy. The graphics aren't too much. The, the, the body kit was something that was, you know, that we see on a lot of cars. So we can use that tooling and, you know, make other versions, other graphics, other liveries. Um, and we can make his car and it, it'll fit right into our brands and not, not have any, like, it'll, it'll be seamless. Um, but other cars, like, you know, some guys will want us to do their, their, um, there, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm trying to think of like a vehicle that that something like one off with custom everything on it. Yeah, yeah, it's like some, some maybe it's a, a you know a Yaris, you know that's a wide body Yaris right. that, and you know there's for us we know our market there isn't any market but cool, I've like seen that. some really cool wide <laughs> wide body Yaris. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm down. I I wanted a Yaris for a long time Me too. because I, I like small cars and um. Yeah, I mean, we, I would love to do it, but you know, our market, our, our demographic may not pick up on it. You know, and my, if if we have a one car that doesn't sell and it sits on the shelf, that can be the end of that brand on the line on 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 the mass market. Mm. So we have to be really smart about right. what we put together and what we put out, and it, and it could be as simple as as the wrong graphics. You know, if we put bad graphics on a car and it doesn't sell, it'll sit on a shelf. And it'll start, start collecting. So imagine we have uh, what we, we we release cars in waves, right? So each wave for 124 scale has four vehicles, and one of them is a dog that doesn't sell. All three of them sell. The other three sell, but that one gets left on the shelf. They open up another package. They put all four out. All three, the three sell. The one that doesn't sell. Now there's two on the shelf. Oh yeah. So it just keeps piling up, piling up, piling up. To a point where it's all they can't put any more new product out. It's all the bad product that doesn't sell, and it sits there on a shelf for three, four weeks. And now uh, Walmart and Target are calling us, say, hey, "This is not selling. We're going to drop that item." I've experienced that as a as a shop when I'm shopping for toys for other people, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, for well, other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> let me just go see what they have. Um, you look at the back of the box, and you see the whole collection. And you're yep. like, I want this car, but there's 15 of these fuckers. Yeah, I yeah, don't want exactly. I don't want even one of these. You know, yeah. So that's that makes a lot of sense. I never really thought about it that way, but that makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense. Why yeah. I'm looking so, at like six of the same one and, and zero of the one I want. Yeah. So that's when you know um, those those the whatever. If there's a bunch of one item on the shelf, nobody's wanting that one. Yeah. That's that's going to be that could be an issue unless you're like a Hot Wheels who you know who owns that space. They're they're never gonna you know drop Hot Wheels because of the price point and and the popularity, you know. But when it's a you know a company like us who ha- who's always constantly every season fighting for the spot that we have, yeah, it's easy for them to drop us and brought, bring someone else in. So we have to be really really careful with what we put out. Let's do some quick fire Q and A. Sounds good. PB and J or grilled cheese. Uh, dude, I'm kind of lactose, so PB and J. Oh, you're lactose. We can't be friends, yeah, dude. Um, but I love, dude. I'll sacrifice though. You know, all everyday thing. If I'm gonna, if I have to, it'll be PB and J. But guilty pleasure. If if it's there and it's it looks good, I'm I'm all about the the, the grilled cheese for sure. I'm with you. Um, <laughs> you you have to go with the PB and J because it's more portable. Yep. You yep. can you can take you can't you can't just take a grilled cheese anywhere. You just you gotta exactly. make it. Exactly, that's true. It and eat it. You have to eat it right away. It's gotta get that goo. You know, you can't you can't let that stretch go away. Have you ever taken a bite out of a grilled cheese sandwich and been sitting there for a while? I have. I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, it's it's not like old uh, or cold pizza. It's not the same. Cold pizza, I'm good with, but cold grilled cheese, you need that crunch from the toasted bread. You need that pull, that cheese pull. You're going to be the first person I ask this question to. And I'm, su- I'm surprised I haven't put it up on social media or made a reel about it. But I, I can't be the. Have you ever gone to the fridge? Now I'm keeping in mind that you know your family structure may have been different being raised mm-hmm. and knowing that you're kind of lactose. Although one could argue this isn't even real milk product. But <laughs> you ever go to the fridge and just open up a slice of cheese and eat it? Heck yeah, dude. I'm all about. That. I still do to this day. You know, I, I if I'm home, I'm I'm in a safe zone. 
<laughs> so, so you know what I mean. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna go out and seek it and eat it at a, at a restaurant or something. But if I'm at home and there's a slice of cheese in there, I'm, I'm all about it. I'm, I'm, dude. I'm, I'm opening the bag of shredded cheese and grabbing a handful yes. and sticking them in my mouth. Like, like it's a fucking big league chew or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. Yeah, my son thinks it's disgusting. I'm like, this has got to be normal for people to open up the Come drawer on, and, man. and what are you talking about? And charcuterie take a slice. boards are just a. A, a more civilized version of that. A hundred percent. Pancakes or waffles? I like texture, dude. It's all about the waffles. Fair. Uh, this is this will be a good one for you, I think. Star Wars or Star mm-hmm. Trek? Star Wars. Um, I started getting into Star Trek a little bit, but I I, I think it's too sci-fi for me. I, I like sci-fi, but I I can't get deep into those crazy like Dune and all those other ones. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm a Star Wars guy because it was kind of easily, uh, I, I can easily get it. It's it's not a, too much thinking for me. <laughs> Did you ever play Mass Effect? No, I haven't. You probably don't have. Massive. I know about it. I know it. I, I know the product. I, I've never played so it. So that, I, ha- I, n- I hadn't played the, the most recent one. And when I say recent, it was probably five years ago now. But yeah, yeah. that game is so sci-fi, third person, yet immersive. I like. I swear, I live that life. Like I fucking love. But that's really? what I thought about when you said Star Trek. Like from, that is one of my top video game franchises ever as a PC gamer. But I'm with you. I, I love Star Wars. I like yeah. Star Trek. I've never not liked Star Trek, but I've never. It's never yeah. challenged my imagination. I've never wanted to be the guy with the little stupid little phaser, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I always wanted to have the laser pistol from star yeah. wars or always wanted to have yeah. the sword or fly the millennium falcon yeah, it's yeah. just it just challenges you differently i guess also like i think visually because of all the fight scenes and all the the, the special effects in star wars that's what grass grass me like, like i was saying with robotech that it's the design of the of the of the mechs that really got me and i really yeah. like the design of the star wars stuff what's a pet peeve of yours pet peeve um when people say idea instead of idea Ah, uh, when they bend, when they bend words, that's, I'm calling it bending words. It's, it's like a microaggression of showing you that they're more, you know, educated than you are. Exactly, dude. Oh my gosh, I can't stand that. That's hilarious. All right, Mike. Um, how can people follow you? You know, your your seven fourteen s. Well, first off, where does yeah. that come from? Seven fourteen is um, uh, it's. It, I had a photography company. Um, oh, okay. We kind of retired from that. We so it was 714 photography, uh, but that came from uh, the fact that 714 July 14th is my wedding anniversary. Oh, a little hard yeah. to forget that. Smart. Exactly. That's why I did it, dude. That's so. That's, <laughs> that's that's a heady play right there, dude. And then you have a yeah. TRD. You have a, a truck version of it because so your 714 is your main Instagram. Yep. Guys, 714s. Yeah. yeah. So 714s is the Supra. Uh, 714 dot yes. s. Um, and the s really is for the small car because that's the the Supra is the small car. Oh. And then I have a 714 dot xl, which is the the, the Tundra. Reminds me yeah. of my vanity plates on my cars. Uh huh. So obviously the NSX is VF1 S NSX. Yeah, but yeah. then I have an Infinity FX 50s, and oh. and that license plate is my Fat X. Oh, <laughs> but people see that and they're like, especially when my wife drives my car, they're like, "Oh, I love your license plate." It's like that's pretty funny. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> or they're like, "Oh, does that have to do?" I, I bet you, I'm surprised they haven't been turned in. I, I'm sure that offends someone, but it actually has to right, do with the right. FX 50s. It's just a fat Infinity, you know. <laughs> It's funny because I, I I was just looking at this one post that I did like ten years ago on my Facebook memories, and it was um, it was I just reposted a picture of someone who had a license plate that said a new start a n u s t a r t, but if you look at it, it looks it says anus tart. It doesn't. Ah, <laughs> so, so intentions were good, but the 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 actual effect, nah, I don't think it worked out too well. I love it. I'm surprised it hasn't been turned in yet either. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Love rapping uh, with you. Um, yeah, we're you have too, to do man. This, this was again, fun, man. man. Yeah, for sure, dude. Anytime, man. I'm. Uh, I'll be available for you, man. All right. As long Let's... as I'm moved in, and and and, uh, and this whole big Jada move to different locations are done. But yeah, <laughs> I'll make time.
Sounds good. Um, Sounds if I'm ever good. out there, I'll let you know, and hopefully the stars yeah. will align and we can link up for a grilled cheese sandwich or something. Sounds good to me. Thanks, man. I want to thank Mike Jimenez for taking the time to have a long phone call, a fun phone call. As with all conversations, totally unscripted. That was just like calling up an old buddy, although we just met, and talking about whatever. A lot of fun. Hopefully we can do that again. If you have any questions for anything you've heard, hardworkingpodcast at gmail.com. I want to thank Right Honda and Right Toyota, Four Wheel Online, Cell Shop Wireless Services. Also, can't forget my Patreon business supporters, Quia Automotive out of Warren Garden, Florida, Pell Construction out of Caledonia, Michigan, Beak House, Small Home Design out of Asperg, Virginia, <laughs> Ashburn, Virginia, and Traverse City, Michigan, Westgate Exotic Cars and Rentals out of Glendale, Arizona, and Shaving Success with the one and only Wes Tinkersley out of Boise, Idaho. Catch myself and Wes Tinkersley every Wednesday on Instagram Live, 7 o'clock Pacific time. We do our One Drake Wednesday. It's a virtual happy hour. Essentially, it's us, all of you. Join us. It's a lot of fun. If you own a business and you want to be a Patreon business supporter, go over to patreon.com, Hard Parking Podcast, and sign up. Access to bonus audio, show swag, all sorts of things, as well as if you just want to be a supporter of it, you don't have to own the business. Same deal. Speaking of supporters, Mark Stoneman, Catherine Cox, Eddie Ramos, Richard Grace, Byron Jones, Bo Jung, Alex Kamina, Drew Bunkley, and David Garner. If you're interested in picking up a Hard Parking Podcast shirt, you can email the show or go to hardparkingpod.com. New shirts should be listed soon. Follow me on Instagram at jfinning and join the Hard Parking Violations Facebook group. I can't grow that you tell the world how great the show is. Let's do this. Let's grow this thing together. And I'll talk to you all next week. Shut up! <laughs> a beater. <laughs>